Good afternoon. My name is Nick D for BIS. Welcome to Extremist Ultimus, the death of democracy. This is still a demo, but we are going to be playing as James Haddock and his American uh, Spirit Party. And you can see in the background, it actually is James Haddock's uh, Republican uh, National Union. But the days of twilight. Across the planet, both new and old ideologies stand to overthrow the status quo and bring about a new global order. In the United States, congressional deadlock in a weak presidency has turned Americans against their government. In Europe, EU skepticism grips the continent as old rivalries surface, all the while Russia stands poised to strike. In Asia, China's fate is tied to the aging President Xi Jinping, and India struggles to contain a new ideology advocating for the extinction of humanity. Truly, these are the twilight hours for humanity. As a precise scenario, and we are going to be playing as James Haddock. You can see the three paths, just a normal, uh, actually this is the Confederation, the Lion Revolt, which is led by a genetically mod like modified super soldier, and then James Haddock, who we'll see takes inspiration from Orwell. But I'll read this description, and then when we get in the game, I'll read all of like the little political descriptions. But the founding fathers designed the American government to be slow to react in order to limit radicalism. When we when years passed with no action after the 2008 financial collapse, the people were furious. As the mainland Democrat. Mainline Democrats and Republicans collapsed in on themselves in the 2020 election. Many people were glad to see Bernie Sanders take charge. However, the great, this great hope was snuffed out as Bernie passed away from a heart attack early in his term. When his unpopular vice president, Tulsi Gabbard, took control. In the years since, an unprecedentedly just joining government has driven America to, uh, beyond the breaking point, and our people are turning to figures who they believe can finally end their torment. Uh, let's also have a look at the world. Um, you can see little Altai broke off from Russia. They're under the influence of the People's Republic of China. Besides from that, we have the Lost Company here. A bunch of mercs left behind. They get defeated pretty easily by the Islamic Emirate. Uh, we also have Republic of Kurdistan. I think they're in the sphere of influence of Turkey. Uh, we also have the Syrian Arab Republic who have won their civil war. A big, thick Israel, a relatively big. Uh, Ukraine still has not been invaded yet, even though it's the first of November. And we have this, uh, K S A F C A Z. Then we also have the Slovak Crimson Republic, Fifth French Republic, and Libya, like it is in real life, is a mess. Central African Republic's a mess. We have the East African state. Uh, Republic of Sudan and the Arab Republic of Egypt. They were supposed to fight over the Nile. We also have Yemen having a, a Marxist-Leninist path. But let's get into the game and then we can read all the different modifiers we have. Before we also get into the game, I did make the pause, but I want to tell you guys this. We are going to be leaving occult options on. Controls other options involving outright magic. The occult or other absolutely unrealistic scenarios can appear. And absolutely yes, we will keep that uh, ticked. Okay, let's start chronologically with the 50s and 60s. In April 1951, General Douglas MacArthur independently re redeployed Strategic Air Command nuclear bombers to Sunuju, a nuclear uh, North Korean city on the banks of the Yalu River. The city was uh, devastated by a device yielding uh, the equivalent of 30 kilotons of TNT, and the destruction spread well into Chinese territory. This was intended as a first strike in a general nuclear bombardment of Chinese positions in Manchuria prior to a land invasion, but MacArthur was relieved of command before he could proceed. The Sinuji incident led to a failure of the American mission in Korea and a severe loss of face. The United States continuing experimenting with tactical deployment of plutonium fission devices during the Vietnam War against hard to pinpoint NVA anti aircraft batteries. Having tested the limits of Soviet nuclear retaliation doctrine by accident, America was emboldened to push the envelope further. Tactical nuclear strikes would come to be an established and extreme component of military doctrine for all major powers. On April 15, 1961, Eight B-26 B invader bombers flew into Cuban airspace, attacked several airfields. Over the next few days, groups of Cuban exiles trained by the CIA landed on beaches across the island, aided by U.S. Uh, U.S. I 
USA, U.S. air support, my apologies. Despite heavy resistance and condemnation from the Soviet Union, the U.S.-backed rebels ousted Fidel Castro. As Cuba was liberated or more, more accurately turned into a puppet state, Castro fled to Colombia. President Kennedy justified the U.S. support of the uprising as necessary to secure the liber liberty of com Cubans from communist tyranny. Two years later, those words would come back to haunt him. Lee Harvey Oswald, a wannabe uh, communist revolutionary, let me pause this, uh, Fired two shots at Kennedy's motorcade in Dallas as a revenge for Cuba. The first uh, shot struck, killed Jackie Kennedy. The second struck Kennedy's arm. That's when the Secret Service agent in front of Kennedy fumbled the newly issued AR-15, lost his balance, and fired a round directly into Kennedy's head. Uh, the, new, the resulting blunder of a cover-up uh, deepened skepticism towards the government. It was just one of the many scandals that sapped away the Johnson's administration. Uh, days of rage, however, actually delivering that mandate was a whole other beast. While well, Kennedy managed to pass some small reforms, he ultimately found himself with a deadlocked Congress and a lame duck term. The progressives have placed their hope in him, became disillusioned, further radicalized. By 1970, the left had turned on RFK. Uh, the breaking point was uh, the exposure of the Conf Co Intel Pro program which had been continued under Kennedy with this tacit approval. The flower power generation fully turned on the establishment and any hope in enacting meaningful change during, through the corrupt system. Uh, this was the beginning of the days of rage, a series of riots, minor uprisings, bombings, and assassinations, which rocked the, country's for, rocked the country for six years. Comparable intensity to the troubles in Britain, many at the time viewed it as the opening stages of civil war. Then we have Reagan, more Reagan, Rumsfeld, Bush, Clinton, the 9-11, Afghanistan was invaded, neutron bombs, fried columns of Iraqi tanks, the doomed crews stagger out vomiting blood as the U.S. infantry marched past them, DARPA black projects and mad science were unleashed on enemy combatants and civilians alike. Uh, there was no attempts to nation building or winning the hearts and minds. There was the wars of imperial plunder, driven on by thirst for revenge, carefully cultivated by the Cheney administration. The full might of the MIC was brought down upon the nations and destroyed, leaving wastelands ripe for plunder by Halliburton and defense contractors for massive profits. Uh, let's let's do the nineteen the the oh eight collapse. I mean. Uh, while the United States inflicted hell upon Iraq and Afghanistan, life at home was perhaps the best have, had ever been. With a largely deregulated financial sector fueling a boom, booming housing market, it seems like there was more than enough of the American dream to go around. That was until it all came crashing down. After years of booming the financial system with mortgages that had been semi-secretly cut with subprime... Oh, this is what happened in real life. Uh, tax base imploded, gutting the welfare system, but curiously not the bailouts for billionaires. Millions found themselves without jobs and thrown out into the streets. Massive internal migrations began as people moved out, seeking any position they could. Uh, most could only find underpaid service industry jobs. Uh, although the 08 collapse officially ended in 2020, oh my god, the economy still hasn't recovered. It remains stuck in a lull of LA, uh, punctuated with bursts of prosperity and crashes. Okay, let's do continue, and we're going to choose the James Haddock per perspective. There's the anarchist perspective, um, James Haddock's perspective, President's perspective, the communist perspective, and the rightist perspective. Uh, well, let's do James Haddock's. Um, James Haddock, an eminent legal scholar from New York, is something of a singular figure. If, not, if only for his meandered path and the strength of his convictions, he entered politics shortly after the 08 collapse, working with the CPUSA to try to replace the contradiction riddled and crisis prone capitalist system with something more rational, more stable. He became disillusioned with communism, however, as the abject failure of the activist movements of the early 2010s played themselves out, and the party leadership grew stale and self absorbed. After years of political nihilism, he eventually found his inspiration, inspiration in an unlikely place. The unfinished final works of the Trotskyist author and Spanish Civil War veteran George Orwell. In the pages of 1984, among the disjointed tangle of ide ideas left behind by Orwell after his untimely death, Haddock found the truest expression of what he wanted in the government. Stable, unchanging, eternal, unquestionable. His eagle spirit party is dedicated to that vision and determined to bring it to fruition, sweeping away the typical Washington's rat's nest and creating a government to truly unify us all. For the Republic, 
Uh, you'll see things from the point of view of James Haddock, leader of the Eagle Square Party, and its top lieutenants, Aramis, Jupiter, and Commandant Price. This is uh, for those who intend to play as the Republican Union of America. And that's us, obviously. We uh, also have a little focus tree as the United States. Uh, really, there's uh, a civil war is going to fire, and there's nothing we can do to stop it. So we'll just weather the storm. Military-wise, we're just going to try to make as much infantry fighting vehicles as possible. More so when we play as the Republican National Union. When we take out the United States, we get all that equipment. It's a win-win. Uh, let's also get a lot of close air support. I love Oh, it's A-20 Warhogs. That's cool. Uh, let's get all, also artillery. That's that. Uh, a lot of artillery. Let's get some resources. Oh, wow. We have no uh, no factories. Uh, let's also see our technologies. Uh, support weapons. Really, uh, this is not the most like riveting content I know. But it's a simple one to do. But I'll read our uh, modifiers now. Let's just get new armor. Not really that important. Hold on. You could play. <laughs> you, you actually. I just noticed this. Technically, look at this. Look at production. Show older, outdated equipment. You can go as a great war tank and try to fight like an M1 Abrams with that little World, world War One tank. But what is this resource right here? Uranium. Wow. What is, what is using uranium? It's probably our nuclear weapons. Yeah, we have. We have a bunch of nuclear reactors. Let's see our modifiers. Foreign competition in the domestic market with the rise of the international corpor corporations across the world. Our laws ensure fair competition have been slow to punish those who abuse them. As a result, our business sector has been crippled by unethical practices and corruption. Uh, police and citizen clashes. Police have always had a contentious history in America, but ever since 08, public distrust has turned into outright hostility. Those on the left view the police as nothing more than the racist thugs of the capital, uh, only good for shooting minorities and defending their master's property. Uh, those on the right have become increasingly disillusioned with the police, with many now viewing the thin blue line as an over-militarized welfare leech that only serves to do the bidding of big government. These tensions came to head in 2017 when massive riots against the Trump administration were sparked by a string of police shootings. Today, the police are increasingly embattled and distrustful civilians, and the feelings are quite mutual. In some areas, militarization has reached new heights, with APCs and SWAT teams rolling through the streets and police shootings being daily occurrences. Corruption is rampant, and some precincts are essentially criminal gangs. In other places, to found the police efforts will push through with disastrous results. California's police defunding is a platonic example of such attempts. Wealthy communities hired private security with even less oversight and looser rules of engagement. Most of these private security forces are staffed by the bad apples that left their precincts as soon as they realized they can make more money guarding rich neighborhoods in Beverly Hills. Everyone else in the state has been left to rely on overstretched and largely useless police departments or street militias, many of which are politically aligned. As elections draw closer and the situation deteriorates, the police have become increasingly paranoid and battled. These rumors that the long-known police links to far-right organizations have become open cooperation. Uh, memories of 08. The crash of 08 was the largest financial crash in living memory. Even over a decade later, the world has yet to recover. Uh, floundering in economic malaise and unstable markets, every time it appears that recovery is underway, something kicks it back down. The ISIS insurgency, the 2017 riots, peak oil. As people try and scrape out an existence, they grow more and more enraged that nothing seems to be able to be done. Then fading empire. Ever since the end of World War II, the United States was the undisputed leader of the Western world order. Although the Warsaw Pact was a formidable foe, it was a divine mandate that America would triumph in the end. And triumph it did. Trial after trial, crisis after crisis, America emerged as the victor time and time again. Through the, de through the decades, Americans were becoming richer, enjoying lives of luxury, and go to bed with full bellies. As the 2000s rolled around the corner, many Americans were expecting the end of history, a permanent liberal democratic world order, but 2008 shattered the illusions of destiny. How could the richest, strongest, most advanced nation could possibly leave its people to starve in the streets? How could the politicians waste time bickering when action was needed? Uh, these and many others were questions that slowly crept into America's public discourse. At the start of 2010, 
uh, chilly wind was beginning to blow across America. It was a silent dread that maybe, just maybe, America wasn't designed to reign forever. After all, Rome was once the sole superpower too. And military overextension. The military-industrial complex is a beast of a machine that fueled America's prosperity from the 50s onward. Reaching new heights under the Reagan administration, the milita America's military and the systems that supported it seemed invincible. It was impossible to imagine a world where the U.S. military wasn't the strongest on Earth. Well, it isn't hard to imagine now. The U.S. military, far from the juggernaut of the Cold War and the War on Terror, is a shell of itself. The 08 crash gutted the taxpayer base that greased the gears of war, even with deficit it's spending much to public outrage. The Pentagon has become so mired in bloat over spending and money sinks that throwing away money couldn't make the problems go away. President Sanders ordered an audit of the Pentagon as part of his platform, hoping to streamline the military. Since his death, however, this effort has been stuck in limbo. A military budget has been passed in over a year. Uh, overseas troops no longer receive supplies. Ships have been stuck in port and training exercises have ceased. Meanwhile, the common soldier grows angry at the officers, and officers grow angry at the Pentagon. The Pentagon begs for more money for the Raytheon. That's accurate. Uh, now we also have the Sinuju bombing in April 1951. Uh, uh, let me, I, we, we already read this, but perhaps most importantly, this callous used some unimaginable power for a worthless and, and shattered America's perception of itself as a moral authority in the world, in the, air, in the arena of world politics. Discouraged generation, um, Basically, young have no such memories. Earliest memories are terrorist attacks, preparing drills and bloodstained sounds and flags, political turmoil and scandal and collapsing markets and stability and joblessness and crime. Uh, there are no good memories of what America used to be. Only despair, political collapse. Uh, Democrats and Republicans in Washington were far too busy clamoring about technicalities. They are the color of citizens. So people are starting to turn to other stuff. And just look at the pie chart of the political beliefs. And most importantly, we have the Eagle Spirit Party, who are national totalitarianism. I mean, there's one uh, national totalitarianism state, and it is, funnily enough, it's San Marino. And look at that. National Orwellians believe that mass propaganda and surveillance result in most secure and sophisticated societies. Some individual liberties may exist so long as they exist within the state's interests. Yeah. National totalitarianism, if it wasn't made clear before, is taking the unfinished draft of 1984. I mean, like, that's a good idea. That's kind of respectful, I gotta be honest. Okay, that was a joke. But crumbling infrastructure, a little too realistic. Second Amendment, a lot of guns, and the Five Eyes program. Let me read it. Uh, Five Eyes program, often abbreviated as F-V-E-Y, is an Anglophone intelligence agent alliance comprising Australia, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. These countries are parties to the multilateral UK-USA agreement, a treaty for joint cooperation and signals intelligence. The origins of the W uh, WVEY can be traced back to the post-World War II period, uh, when the Atlantic Charter was issued by the Allies to lay out their goals for a post-World War post-war world. The treaty is heavily based on trust between the participant nations, mainly centered around their shared aspects of the English language and democratic values. This has led to many speculate that one of the constituted nations and their democratic instit institutions, then, then the entire program could collapse. Yeah, it's going to collapse. But let's look at some of our political party. We have the anarchists, led by the line of socialism, the reconstructed Black Panther Party, Communist Party USA, the Mao Spontex uh, Pantherist Movement, the Green Party Democrats, Libertarians, Republicans, New Re no, hold on, uh, New Republican Party, let's see, National Renaissance Party, National Renaissance Party by Ethnic Nationalists, uh, National Renaissance National Renaissance Party by Authoritarian, uh, Intercongressional Alliance, U.S. Armed Forces, New Jefferson Party. Uh, then the Eagle Spirit Party, and then the Eagle Spar Spirit Party Radical Wing, which is Annihilationist. Let's see if we can find any Annihilationist in the world. Uh, let's see. Ledger. Uh, I, I don't know. Uh, ideology. There we go. Um, okay, it should be green. I don't think there are any Annihilations at GameStar now that I think of it. But let's see. They'll probably pop up. Uh, 
Oh, Sansakat Bridget. But they'll pop up when Russia collapses. That's a little spoiler, probably for the next couple episodes. Bye. I'm Nick D4VIS. I'll see you guys next time.